All right, so with Le'Veon Bell soon to be leaving the Pittsburgh Steelers, maybe for the Oakland Raiders, and Antonio Brown soon to be traded to the Raiders, the Steelers have no Super Bowl wins, no Super Bowl appearances to show for the Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown era in Pittsburgh, and that has inspired today's draft. Now, this one's going to be kind of open-ended, and it's also going to be subject to interpretation. We are looking at the best teammate combinations that failed to win a Super Bowl. So if you're going to get creative, you got to make your case, Chris because this one this one could get off the rails but here's hoping that it won't well we'll start the process of going off the rails with rock paper scissors although we we may go back to the coin toss we, we were supposed need to discuss to. that over the weekend i forgot why because all right let's do it is it is everything locked and loaded for the coin toss Kristen? all right go ahead all right go ahead call Let, it let's go tails then good old tails Oh, baby. Flexibility in the control room. And and not only did Kristen call it up instantly, she rigged it instantly, too. So congratulations. You get the first pick. Yeah, well, I, I think the first one that I'm going to go with is was a special trio. I mean, you could say what you want, but I know two out of the three of the Hall of Famers. I'm going to go with the Buffalo Bills trio that never won a Super Bowl. And Jim Kelly, Thurman Thomas, and uh, Andre Reid. I mean, hey, come on. The K-Gun and what they were doing at the time, that was a special, special team team and offense and certainly special players at you know the three most or three skill positions on the offensive side of the ball Thurman Thomas was ahead of his time as far as that dual threat running back right a guy who could run the ball between the tackles but was phenomenal out of the backfield in the pass game uh, Andre Reed could do it every do everything he could beat you over the top for bombs he could work the middle of the field and of course Jim Kelly is a Hall of Fame quarterback uh, who certainly could could do it all within the pocket as a pocket passing quarterback good decisions big time throws tough as hell so for me that's the that's the 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 big one that jumps out to me right off the bat yeah and and this is one of those days where it's unfortunate the coin toss is rigged you you led me right into it because i was gonna win rock paper scissors because that's the obvious choice four straight super bowl appearances no super bowl wins all hall of famers the k-gun offense and and reed's in the hall of fame right i forgot him i I forgot he was in yeah i'm a dummy sorry go ahead yeah well, we already knew that. You didn't have to remind <laughs> us, but we'll take it. Okay, I, I, there, there are plenty of different ways this can go now. I am going to start with Dan Marino and the Marx Brothers Ooh. from the mid-'80s. Mark Clayton, Mark Duper, Dan Marino. And remember, Marino got there in his second NFL season. He assumed he'd be back in the Super Bowl multiple times after that, and he never even got back to the Super Bowl. And uh, the, the, it just felt like that was a group, that that was an offense. At a time when offense was really taking over in the NFL – It just felt inevitable they were going to win a Super Bowl, and they never did. Marino and the Marx Brothers, my my second choice after you stole the best one. Yes, good. Thank you. Yes, but that that certainly was a phenomenal group. I mean, a lot like the the group I just talked about. I mean, they were offensively ahead of their time, right? That that Miami Dolphins offense and those guys, you know, Duper and Clayton and Dan Marino. I mean, they were the, the greatest show on turf that we had seen to that point. I mean, Come on. I mean, Dan Marino threw for 5,000 yards in 1984. That'd be like somebody throwing for over 6,000 yards in this day and age in the NFL in a single season. That's how crazy that was at that time. So uh, pretty cool. Can't fault you there. And that, right. that record that record stood for like 25 years. I know. It's unreal. And, yeah. and, and stood, you know, for a good amount of time where the rules had been changed for the offensive, you know, side of the ball and quarterbacks and wide receivers to where it still was not an easy task uh, to pass that up so my next pick uh, I'm gonna go with um, one that hits home to old Mike Florio okay the old Minnesota Vikings remember that 1998 team Mike that went 15 and one with Cunningham Moss Carter I don't know who you're talking about that was one of the best teams I ever saw not get to the Super Bowl okay I mean man did they mess that up who was that that put the dagger in your heart that day was that Morton Anderson who ended it for you for the Atlanta Falcons no it was Gary Gary Anderson. Anderson. No, yeah, but it was Gary, Gary Anderson missed his only kick of the year a 39 yarder from the left half, left hash mark every time a field goal kicker lines up for a 39 yard field goal from the last left 
hash mark. I think of this going wide. The only kick he missed all year would have put the Vikings up by 10, would have guaranteed the spot in yep. Super Bowl 30, whatever it was, 32, 33. And, of course, they would have lost to the Broncos anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. Well, I don't know about all that, but either way, that team was very talented. And those three players, I mean, come on, Chris Carter's, all he does is catch touch touchdowns. Randy Moss's rookie year, I mean, really was a guy that we had never quite seen a specimen like Randy Moss until until that year. A guy went, what? He's that tall and he can run by everybody and make people miss in space and, you know, moss everybody and catch the jump balls and Randall Cunningham, you know, with a second breath of fresh air and his career throwing bombs all over the football field. That is like one Super Bowl I feel cheated out of. I wanted to see that Broncos Vikings Super Bowl, but that was a phenomenal team. Yeah, and of so course did they I. didn't capitalize. Yeah, sorry. 98 lost in the NFC Championship game in overtime. 99, they were leading the greatest show-offs on turf at halftime. Lost that game like 49-37 because the Rams exploded in the second half. And then 2000, if 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 uh, who was the receiver? Antonio Freeman, the who did what catch. You take that who did what catch. He did what? Remember Al Michaels? Yeah. He did what? He did you what? You take that away. Vikings have the one seed, and the Giants have to go to Minnesota, and instead of the Vikings losing 41-0, oh, they I was there were that more likely day. to... Yeah, that yeah. was a that was a Woo. that was a heck of a game too. Even, yeah. So after that, it Woo. all fell apart. Yeah. Those three years, they had their shot, and it all fell apart after that. Yeah, so that, thank you for no thank problem. you for bringing that up. Man, that NFC Championship game I was at with the Giants too. Woo, that was over in a hurry. Man, you must have you didn't even get a chance to cry on that one. It was over so quickly. That is better than having it last for three and a half hours and losing overtime because I was asleep by halftime. I just said the hell with it. I took a nap. Because it was 14 nothing right out of the gates. It was. Troy Ed, Was it Troy Edwards? He let the kickoff land right in front of him. He looked at it. The kick <laughs> landed, and he looked at it. And the Giants recovered it. So it went from 7 to nothing to 14 nothing. But I'm not bitter. All right. Uh, here's one. Here's one that um, you, you're, it's going to surprise you. But uh, it's, it's one of the guys you just mentioned later in his career when he ended up with the best offensive performance we've ever seen from a receiver in a single season along with Tom Brady and Wes Welker you had Brady Welker Moss the 16 and 0 Patriots failed to deliver and we don't think of the Patriots in terms of futility because they got six Super Bowl championships but that was the best team we ever saw the best trio of quarterback and receivers we ever saw between Welker and Moss and obviously Brady that failure there they, they should have had a Super Bowl ring to show for it. They should have had a trophy to show for it. We just assume everybody that's passed through New England the last 20 years has a Super Bowl ring. Moss doesn't, and Welker doesn't. No. At least not from the Patriots. It's, it's actually unbelievable when you think about it that they never got one, either one of them. Uh, I mean, so close. Of course, that was an unbelievable game by the New York Giants and that defensive team. But, yeah, it's just one of those things when you think about it as a, on a topical level, you just go, hey, that, man, that team that went 17 or, you know, what it was 16 and 0 and did all those special things, it's just amazing. I actually feel bad for Wes Welker, Mike. I'm not even going to lie. I mean, for as awesome as he was, all the good things he he did for that football team for the fact that yes you know he didn't get to win a Super Bowl uh it, it does as just a guy who loves football I know how much he does I hurt for him almost in that in that capacity all right my last one here. I, I couldn't I couldn't remember whether or not Welker eventually got a ring he didn't he was with the Broncos when they got blown up by the Seahawks and his last year in Denver was the year before the Broncos won Super Bowl 50 exactly right so I mean he he was cursed as far as that was concerned okay I, I don't know where I want to go with this um, because I'm going to go with the San Diego Chargers, okay? They're not, you know, and before they were the Los Angeles Chargers. And I, the Ladanian Tomlinson, Antonio Gates, and I'm not sure what quarterback I want to throw in here. If, well, yeah, I mean, if you can't pick the quarterback, how in the world can you say this is the best combination of teammates to not win well, a Super Bowl? It's, it's you can't even way. figure out which quarterback I, I to can put go either in. Way. I'm going to go with the one that hits this subject hard. I'm going to go with Drew Brees because people value him as a higher up on the career all-time rankings as far as the Phillip Rivers. But, man, they were all on the, the same team together, 2004, 2005. Am I correct? It might have been 2003 as well. I'm not totally 100% sure about that. But, man, when you look back about that – 
one of the greatest running backs of all time, LaDainian Tomlinson, single season, you know, touchdown records being broke in the conversation for that record every year, it seemed like, during that time period. Antonio Gates, special player. I mean, Hall of Fame tight end. Uh, he, he was unstoppable, especially at that point in his career. And then there was Drew Brees, where we all know what Drew Brees has become, but at that point, he was not that player, and there were certainly questions about him. But, yeah, they underperformed, especially what was it, that 2005 team where, you know, people were telling them this is the greatest team in the history of the NFL not to make the Six. playoffs. That was 2006. Oh, five. Yeah, yeah five was five. the one. Five, that was Breeze last year. Right. Yeah, the greatest team. So I look back at that and go, just from a name standpoint, that trio right there, the fact that they won nothing substantial uh, kind of rings out to me. You know, I could go a lot of different, and and I, I I'm I, I'm trying to be nice to you because it's Monday and and we had fun last week and this is your second week as a full time employee. But how in the hell can you pick a team for this and not know which quarterback you're going to put in there? That that shows you you shouldn't have picked the Chargers. If you can't figure out which quarterback completes this group of teammates, that's a problem. Well, you could have gone um, either there, one, and I went with the one that was even better than the one I was thinking about. Nah, I just was, I think I was, Rivers. I think Rivers makes more sense because in 2006 they were 14 and two. Okay, and that was the year Ladainian Tom, Tomlinson. Where we're talking about all-time great trios, and Drew Brees is valued as a better quarterback all-time than Phillip Rivers, so I put him in there. Be quiet. Pick your, pick your, stop stalling. <laughs> Get your pick out already. It's not trios. It's combinations. That's where it's subject to some interpretation. Yeah, well, I went with trios. With a I'm a level above you, yeah. so keep going. All right. Go. Well, I'm, I'm going with a quartet, although the trio was the best known. Alan Page, Jim Marshall, and Carl Eller. Uh, this is where I thought you were going to throw salt in the wound. I didn't think you were going to go 98. I thought you were going to go back to the 70s when there were four different editions of the Vikings that made it to the Super Bowl, and they lost every time. The Purple People leaders couldn't get it done, in large part because they weren't big enough to withstand a withering rushing attack. That was always the key to beating the Vikings in the in the Super Bowl. That's why all those games were 23-7 and 24-3 and 16-6. They couldn't stop the run. They were too small. Alan Page weighed 220 pounds. You just run right at those guys. And it's amazing to me, week in and week out, teams didn't do that as a way to stop the Vikings that way it was a boring way to win football games but that was always the way to beat them in the Super Bowl they were great as a pass rushing unit they couldn't stop the run and they definitely couldn't stop the run when it mattered most and the purple people leaders had no Super Bowl trophies to show for four different trips to the championship game man that's rough which one what Super Bowl were you most heartbroken with as a kid which one was the one you were like oh my gosh that hurt which one was it well, not none of them because they were never close. The game that hurt me the most was the the Hail Mary Drew Pearson push off from seventy five. That's the one that killed me. That was horrible. Yeah, I that know. was that was. I mean, and you look at it this way: if that's the the most traumatic thing that happens to you as a child, it's a pretty damn good childhood. That was the most traumatic thing that happened to me as a child. Oh, that was that wow. Game. Yeah, you well, yeah. hey, we always knew with your wine and your medium rare steaks, we always know you had a privileged life. So that's all good. Yeah, yeah, well, we're not going to go down that rabbit hole just now, Mr. Laissez <laughs> Fair. All right. My dad didn't play in the NFL. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.